She's the medical expert on The Greatest Show of All Time on WABC Radio in New York City, Dr. Sue Dakotis. Thank you all for coming on this beautiful day here in Boston. I'm gonna tell you a very personal story. I have been alone for a very long time. I had found it very difficult to find a relationship. It seemed that most men wanted a real traditional kind of girl, you know, a stay-at-home kind of wife, um, and that really wasn't who I was. I wasn't even sure I wanted kids. And a lot of other men just seemed so self-involved, and those relationships didn't work out. And I eventually met this man who had been a contractor through a friend. He was very handsome. His name was Ben, and he renovated a cottage for me, and we got to know each other. He was married at the time, but sometime later became divorced, and we got together. We became a couple. He was a gentleman from South America, of European background, but very different culture. And I just found him so interesting. He had such a different take on things. And I had never been loved in a relationship like that in my life. He thought I was great. He thought everything I did was great. He really respected the work I was doing as a doctor. And when we first got together, he had Lyme disease. So I treated that, and I boosted his immune system and really cleaned up his diet. He was feeling fantastic. And we had such a good time together. We were so happy. We traveled. We entertained. We even adopted two Labrador Retriever rescues from Mississippi, a chocolate and a black lab, who were always escaping. But life is sort of perfect for us. And then Ben started feeling really tired. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe Lyme disease again. And I tested his blood. His blood counts were on the floor. Had to put him in the hospital. And he was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. And AML, acute myeloid leukemia, is the kind of leukemia that usually carries a death sentence. And the initial testing on his leukemic markers were very negative and it indicated that he would probably not respond to chemotherapy. But all they could do was to give chemotherapy, because there was really nothing else they could do in hopes of getting him into remission so that he could get a bone marrow transplant. But we couldn't get him into remission. That's how bad his leukemia was. We brought his brother up from South America to donate bone marrow, because he was a suitable match, and his brother donated marrow but unfortunately, my Ben died before being able to receive the marrow. And I just felt, this is, this is so unfair. I waited so long to find the right man, and it was just taken right away from me. And I was thinking, how did this happen? How could this have happened to him? I mean, look at his brother. He had an almost identical genetic makeup, but he was 10 years older, overweight. He wasn't in very good shape. And he was healthy, and Ben was dead. Well, what had happened was Ben had damaged his genes through exposure to chemicals through his work. He was exposed to oils, paint bases, asbestos, gasoline, you name it. He was exposed to it. And then on top of that, he had Lyme disease several times, so it wasn't properly treated. What you're exposed to in your life affects your genes. It's called epigenetics, and your environment can change your genes. And then for Ben, the continued Lyme disease or perhaps other tick-borne diseases he might have had totally derailed his immune system. And his leukemia within six months turned him into a corpse. He was 53 years old. And I felt so helpless because he seemed to be healthy. He seemed to be the specimen of health. And it was as if someone just flicked on a switch. It just got flicked on. And those damaged, angry genes reared their ugly heads. The traditional medical system failed, Ben. Had he seen the right type of physician 20 years ago when he first started his work? Had he seen a physician who had the presence of mind to take an occupational history and say, what is it that you do for a living? Are, are you exposed to chemicals? Are you wearing a mask? Are you wearing gloves? Where are you storing your chemicals during the day? 
risks and exposures should have been discussed. He should have also been screened for Lyme disease periodically. And this is all part of basic medical care. But that's not what happened. And Ben was clueless about what he was doing to himself. And all those changes that were occurring inside the cell at a certain point became irreversible. The reversible became the irreversible. And at that point, he was a ticking time bomb. He didn't have a chance. So after he died, I was in great pain. But I kept going. And I do what it is that I do, see my patients. And you know, I realized after a while that the only time I felt halfway normal was when I was seeing my patients. And I was more careful than ever in connecting the dots of what was going on with them. I didn't want them becoming a statistic. And they felt like family to me. And they helped me heal. Their trust in me really helped me heal, and I thank them for that. But there's more good news. Today we have a new treatment called exosomes that can surpass the capabilities of what is still the mainstay of bioidentical hormones and functional medicine, cortisol regulation, even peptides. Exosomes are the concentrated intracellular contents of stem cells. They're the juice of the stem cell. And what they do is they train your cells to reproduce healthier, younger cells that they wouldn't have done otherwise. They can treat disease. They can treat Parkinson's, spinal cord disease and transection, arthritis, opioid addiction, wounds, and even have cosmetic uses. They're pretty miraculous. For the healthy person, they can restore the body. Their anti-aging effects increase vigor, mental acumen, and physical energy. And they also have that added ability to reverse any occult problems that are going on. In my practice, we call this the Wall Street cocktail because it makes people so sharp and gives them so much energy. <laughs> ben, unfortunately, never had the opportunity to receive exosomes. But had they been available years back, they could have reversed his DNA damage. Ben would be happy to know that others might benefit from hearing his story, our story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.